This episode is brought to you by HP Instant Ink. No one is reading your mind, but HP Instant Ink knows when your printer is running low and sends new cartridges before you run out. So you never have to think about ink. For details, visit hp.com slash instant ink Spotify. Conditions apply. Heads up. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to My Worst Day. I'm Cassie. I'm Keegan. I'm Christina. And we are back with another episode. And we have, just like we always do, this is why our podcast started with us just getting into talking. Because this is what we do. We start talking before the episode. And everybody, we're like, man, this is good topic of conversation. Right. We're talking about clothes. We're talking about fit. We're talking about fast fashion. Mm -hmm. These are things that I think every person, every woman who's in the dating field can understand and relate to. Yeah, listen, I had three outfits that were fucking fire yeah. when I was dating. When I was like, I fucking know I look good. Yeah. It makes you feel confident. It makes you feel like a goddess, a queen. Amazing. Now, COVID hit. And uh, I was lucky to spend COVID with an amazing gentleman who also happens to love to cook. And uh, yeah, th- that's what we spent COVID doing is yeah. cooking and eating and, and cooking and eating anything and having a bottle of wine. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and anything. anything that makes you feel halfway human and feel good. Right. And no shame because no. we were all surviving no. like the worst thing, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, Absolutely. And like, listen, I, I am to the point where I... I love my body. I don't think it's it's bad, but to be to be frank, I am a, a 38 double D. There's a lot of boobies and so tiggle most bitties. tiggle bitties and most things Girl, hit, I think you need to be me. remeasured because I think you're bigger than that. I do too, actually. What, yeah. like cup say. size? Yes. Well, this is a double D. I'll show you. Um Is it tweet? It's, it's gappy. Oh, well, that's because boobs do this. Your boobs, unless you've had them done, don't give the they don't give this stuff, yeah but the, the i cleavage. really think you're you 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 do got tiggle bitties i know and sorry it's <laughs> it's hard it's hard not to be like angry about it too and oh, just no. feel like self-conscious no, and stuff because blessed. because nothing <laughs> as someone who's the not wearing a bra right now because i oh, have girl, no boobies i'm like yeah I, it, but it's, the grass but is greener yeah. thing right like yeah. I, it took me a really long time i am at the point now where I actually like having small boobs. I feel comfortable like going yeah. out without wearing a bra and I feel I like it, you know, but there were massive insecurity like yeah. growing up, oh, like sure. not having boobs, especially since I have thighs and I have mm-hmm. a butt. And so it made me feel like I wasn't balanced. Right. Like I was like, Always I felt me. I felt like there was something wrong with me, you know, so I feel like you get that kind of grass is greener. Always. Right. Always. But yeah, we were we were talking about basically like I I don't fit into like anything from my wardrobe anymore. And and I don't I don't even have a outfit. If you were to say we're going to go out tonight, like, you know, dress up and go out tonight, I would have to go shopping. Yeah, I would have to. I have nothing. Yeah. Underline nothing. No dresses, no skirts. No, we you have that black pants. dress I gave you, and I know it fits because it's it does not fire. Come, on. my boobies pop it open. It doesn't, it doesn't clasp. So, yeah, it's like get you a cami, girl, and you're done. I know. I have to go shopping, but yeah. then the the issue becomes where. And we were talking about fast fashion and how, like, for the most yeah. part, it like hits my titties mm-hmm. and then just hangs down like I'm hiding a pregnancy. I literally hate hiding a pregnancy clothes i do mm-hmm. too it's the fucking worst i do too this whole like loose garment thing that we for, have going on me. that's fashionable i'm like i wish I, I wish too i think it looks great yeah on that picture yeah and then i try it on and i'm like womp womp yeah. so you yeah. know we're i mean well especially with everybody getting back out there yeah. going out again going on dates again going back into the office mm-hmm. you know I feel like I don't like any of my clothes anymore. Like I want to throw 
all of my clothes out and start over because yeah. I don't know. I feel like I'm a I'm a new woman coming yeah, out right. of this out of this pandemic, and I'm like I don't I don't feel like any of these speak to me anymore, yeah. and I'm just the most comfortable in like what I'm wearing right now, which is just like a band tee and jeans. Yeah. But that doesn't make me feel like. Like a Fe- goddess, like, yeah, like a queen. Yeah, like, fierce and yeah, sexy, which yeah. C- yeah. clothes really, really can. Like when yes, I yes, feel yes. put together, when I've like done that my makeup, makeup my hair, hair is, is hitting mm. just right, when yes. it's curling just right, and like I have an outfit that is like my outfit, I feel unstoppable. Like it really does. Yeah. It it does something to your self-esteem. But see, and I, know, I don't have an outfit eye for it either like I don't really know how to put on makeup I know enough in order to get by I I don't know really how to dress like if you're if I know that feeling when everything does come together and I know it feels good but it's really difficult it's the same way that I felt when we moved into our apartment Eric and I and I decided to buy all new furniture so blank slate I'm like oh fuck I don't know how to do this either <laughs> like i feel like a blank slate but like you, a blank apartment you know what you right like. now i yeah i, I think it's, that it's hard I we're really, gonna start slow. really really want to do this with you because it is my absolutes i want to go let's love, go together let's go together let's buy one item organizing. right mm-hmm. like let's go find one thing that like just one that like you put on and you feel like you put fierce it in. and you feel great in that one thing. Yeah. You and know, you and then we'll find the and then we'll find things that go with that one thing. Yeah. What I'm trying to do though. Capsule wardrobe. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. But also, if you've ever been in a position where it's just like, first of all, like maybe I'm not um super insecure about it, but I am. I'm like tall, I'm curvier and bigger. And sometimes that makes me feel a little insecure next to my more petite, normal sized friends. Oh, oh you are normal, and normal so size. I, I do. If you've ever gone shopping with your friends, though, sometimes it's like if a lot of stuff doesn't fit or doesn't look good in a row, it can. Bitch, I've seen you naked. Be, you got a banging ass can, body. It Same. can be <laughs> a little bit of a not not traumatic experience no, but it can be difficult and i'm like i love you guys and i don't want it's to big, be sad or I hear you it. know what i mean i do there's a there's a definite right headspace that you need to be in when you go shopping too and i think because i've we've all experienced that time where we got went shopping and you're like wait the curvy jeans don't fit me or the this thing that but like i have to get this size because yes. like the way that we yeah. size things here so is madness and it's we different just, for every fucking company yeah it's we so were stupid. just talking about my bra too do yeah. you know how many different sizes oh. of bras that i own Girl you thing. know the it's one kind that of why fits I, me the best right now is a 36D. Um, it's, no, it's I'm why, not, not even not, not even, even a close. little bit. No. It's, it's kind of why I don't like wearing them because yeah. I'm just like yeah. I the ones that I have that are sports so, bra I, that are the only ones that I can really wear are like bralettes, mm-hmm. but those aren't quote unquote and this is stupid too then we need to stop this but they're not professional so you can't really wear a bralette to work because because your nipples could still still show through yeah so you can't wear that to the (sighs) office so you have to wear a bra that has padding on it but all the bras that have padding on it because of the way my i have a very like flat chest up top like yes you know i have a sternum so Mm -hmm. the way that those fit they gap a lot and then they're uncomfortable because there's like that big gap there and they don't fit right and so it's just like oh it's just i hate wearing i would rather not wear bra for all of our male listeners yeah let me break this down for you imagine if every single day you had to wear a contraption that like pulled your balls your balls lifted your balls up and there wasn't a (laughs) consistent sizing right or, you know, there's different. You got the demi cup. You have the push up. You have the wonder, wonder bra T-shirt that just really bra. like pushes them yeah. together to give you that right ball cleavage that you're looking right, for. Yeah. Like, and it just depends. What are you wearing that night? Well, Girl. that's going to depend on what kind of ball, right. ball bra you'll yeah. need. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking god forbid it's strapless god. jesus christ oh you're, like, you gotta you're wear- spending the god whole damn. evening pulling <laughs> at yourself listen <laughs> best money i ever spent was getting my boobs on i don't give a oh fuck oh my god i tell you what i i t- to this day hashtag no regrets not yeah. even a single 
one, not one. I hear you. But, and and you know what? Listen, I always was the person who's like, I'm never going to get my boobs done. That's so stupid. Why would you do that? And then I had two babies that made my boobs like literally literal minuses. Like they were just like so, I mean, ba- feeding babies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it well, takes a no lot joke. out of you. Yeah. And there's a million reasons why anybody would want to do anything. For sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So also, just... none of your business why I did it. Yeah. Happy I did. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> but yeah, the whole the whole yeah. like clothes thing, I mean, for me, we've we've talked to you about like saving up and and slimming down my my wardrobe that I don't need uh, all the clothes that I have mm. right now which are are beautiful and 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 awesome and have different memories and I'm just like they just don't fit anymore. Yeah. A lot of them it's just like because I washed them once and they were from Forever 21. Exactly. Sure. Oh and that's, man. That's sad. That's bad for the environment. Yes. That's By the bad way, before for you so throw many anything people. away, just put it in a pile and oh, let it absolutely. go through it. Cuz I I really do believe in in recycling clothes which is why Absolutely. i rent the runway which is why mm-hmm. you know for me my closet you've seen it you ladies have seen it i've got like literally the smallest closet of clothes and that's what i want yeah i want those capsule pieces yeah. that was like that fit fucking perfectly because i i am what i am i may like slim down like 10 pounds or so but at sure. this point i'm like i'm 40 this is kind of feels like what my body is going to be for a while you know yeah. like in this range i can find stuff that fits and makes me look good but it's just the process of it is so like right. ugh, i mean it's feeling so daunting like it's tedious. the truth is like feeling good is not a size that's right the thing that makes you feel like shit is that we live in a society that caters to a really unrealistic beauty right. standard yeah. that like it, that first of all also comes out of fucking nowhere and makes no yeah. sense like right. beauty standards shift every 10 years I'd be so like, trying I'll to see adhere, y'all bitches in the 1500s when I'm a fucking goddess right, I mean, it's, right. And who's, to say, who's to say in 20 years <laughs> Rubenesque style doesn't come back I right. mean like that's the thing I kind of feel like it is coming back which is the thing I, I really but, do but you know what this this, this current beauty standard, the Kardashian beauty Instagram oh, yeah, model beauty standard, yeah. is equally as unrealistic yeah, no, because it's like yeah. nobody is shaped like that either. In like, real without, life, yeah, without like, help, maybe two percent of the population. Right. You know, so it's 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 not about a size. You know, in terms of like tr- looking good or feeling good, everybody yeah. is capable of feeling good at any size. It's just that society shames you and creates clothes that don't work for yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. certain body I, types. It's like, the reason I always loved um, what not to wear because oh, they right. really were like about like everybody's body looks great. You just yeah. have to find the right clothes that work for your body. Right. Yeah. And that's the thing is we keep trying to look at Pinterest or Instagram and we're like, oh, I want to wear that because I want to look like that. Well, the problem right. is, is I don't have that body. So I got to figure out how to dress this body. I would do the exact same thing. When I was a little girl going into the salon to get my hair cut and I would go in and show them the Jennifer Aniston Aww. with my fucking hair, yeah, my curly Bless hair. Girl, and they were like, you know, I know. Preach. Yeah. Yeah. Where I would go in trying to get like these like super stick thin, uh, straight yeah. white hair yeah. and like it yeah. just does not that work your hair yeah. because those are all the pictures yeah. that you see so in that way i guess it comes around to like representation Absolutely. matters Absolutely. it matters Absolutely. because if i had seen pictures of famous people like amazing people rocking natural curls yeah there would be more examples of what i could do with my hair yeah, there were none i mean no, seriously you're right. i like the curl movement the natural hair, hair movement like happened so much later on like it happened whenever i was really in my like early 20s was when yeah. it was like starting to pick up you're steam right. in the 90s and like through the 2000s it was straight and especially hair. if you were like alternative oh, i yeah. wanted to do like scene hair i wanted to do like hot topic hair right and it was all like straight straight like avril lavigne yep you yep. know like Flat straight iron to death and there were no examples of curly hair looking good. And in fact, any examples that you did have, and I point it out every time we do a um, Tainted Love movie episode like this, curly girls were considered ugly, a la like the Princess Diaries, where she had to have her hair thrown out in order to look beautiful Uh or crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 
a fatal attraction. Yeah. yeah you know exactly. what I mean? Where it's like her hair got progressively curlier the crazier she got. Yep. You know what right, I mean? And right. it was never painted as like something that was con- sweet you had to be like sleek and beautiful mm-hmm. it, it, you know that's what beautiful was and it's, <laughs> you know it's it's the same with clothing i do feel like there there are definitely way more representation now than there there were in like the, uh-huh. the 90s or oh, early yeah, yeah. 2000s oh, yeah. of a curvier body type somebody with with boobs with hips you know that a figure it's, it's yeah. just difficult yeah. you you can't go to old navy no you can't. you can't go to, you know, no. like some of these stores. I mean, you can if you are adept at altering or knowing sure. what knowing to do to. with those clothes to adapt them to your body type. Mm-hmm. I'm not one of those people. Yeah. I can't. We've talked about it, like shop fast fashion and yeah. expect it off the rack to be. But this is what I love about me. going to a really good thrift store too. There is a there is this part part of me that loves that anything that ends up in the thrift store usually if it's if it's it, it usually has to be of somewhat decent quality because it lived long enough to make it to a thrift store, right? right. So you know you're dealing with usually typically good materials, possibly alterable clothes. So if yeah. you find something that you semi like, you can either style it to fit, style it to work, or you can have it altered to work and you're paying almost nothing for it. The alterations probably cost more than the actual outfit, which is fine. But it's something that lives with you forever. Right. And you're recycling clothes. Like I don't know. To me, this is a really big deal lately. I'm just really into this idea of it's that old nineties kid in me who's like, thrift stores is where yeah. it's at. But I, you know I think that uh, the other thing that I need to learn more about, like educate myself about, because I, I got I got lucky when I started dating. I had these clothes. They fit. They made me look good. They made me feel confident. But I need to learn more about accessories. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know dick all about belts. Yep. I don't know the first thing about how to wear belt a belt. Totally changes an outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know. In my belts, experience for the better. Usually earrings, mm-hmm. necklaces, like any of those things. I do not know how to dress. But furthermore, I do not know how to accessorize. Right. So learning those things, I just I need to be able to accept help because mm. I, I don't know what my issue is with being like, I'll, I'll figure it out or like if it's an insecurity thing sure. or what it is. But um, I know that that would make a huge difference yeah. in my confidence in having this this body that's changed or whatever. Sure. And I know it would help me feel better if I yeah. learned these things. I, yeah. I I do tend to be um big on on like Pinterest, like coming up with concepts and like coming up with like like I've sent you like the the capsule wardrobe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 But I love like coming up with like just storyboards for like what I want my wardrobe to look like or storyboards for like I, I just I like that idea and I know that it it doesn't work for everybody not everybody's a visual person like like I I need to see it I need to see what that well, looks I like and putting it together it's and, just like what we were also saying which is don't look at it with the expectation right. that it's going to look like that on you necessarily exactly. but it can give you an idea of like okay if I can find a type of pant that I like on my body that's similar to this then it gives me an idea sure. of something I can pair it with well, right this right? like, is a really what good way of like because it's got so many resources that you can be like mm-hmm. hourglass curvy. figure curvy um it, you know accessorized bo- belted dresses for curvy i mean like you can be so specific right. and really narrow down what you're looking for which i love i think that that's me too that you can get like oh that's my body type mm-hmm. and that's what i can somewhat somewhat realistically have an expectation Aspire of what to. yeah that yeah. looks like right well welcome to our fashion <laughs> podcast i know uh, well, I everybody like- who does not give a single shit <laughs> about know, fashion is just yeah. like fast forwarding skip, skip, <laughs> skip, skip 30 seconds skip. skip 30 seconds well it is it is a thing i yeah. mean and that's why i know on this podcast i've joked about before them just like oh, i just cannot wait until the future until we all have to wear no. uniforms. I hate, I hate i hate which, that yeah it just shows you like how much yeah. like I don't like thinking about clothes. I just want them to well, fit. Well, you know, and you look could good. go the Elizabeth Holmes, Steve Jobs route and just <laughs> you really could. all black just turtlenecks turtleneck. all the time. <laughs> all black turtlenecks. I do all the look time. good in a black turtleneck. I mean, and who doesn't? I mean, honestly. Everyone <laughs> does. People like to poke fun at black turtlenecks, but truthfully, <laughs> everybody looks good in a black turtleneck. It's like, solid. solid. It's yeah. a solid choice. <laughs> yeah. I am on board. 
Oh my god! Well, who should we fuck, Mary, kill this week? After Ooh, let's that go fashion. fashion. Well, let's go fashion. Fashion. I don't know a lot of fashion people. Okay, but I am. I'm down to go down this. Route. Did we do this route before? We did. We, did, but yeah, we, we could do different okay. ones. We could do different designers if you wanted. Because we did Betsy Johnson and. Uh, let's do Tom Ford. Yeah, we did. Let's do clothing stores. Oh, okay. 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 I like this better. Okay. Me too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Been a while since we have done okay. like a not a person. I yes. like this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do Banana Republic. Great. Banana great. Republic. That's a good one. That's a good one. They have some really great stuff. They do. You know what? Good I'm quality. Gonna, I'm going to go H&M. Okay. okay. Go All right. H&M. Well, in the spirit of who I is and how I shop, I am going with the runway. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is actually kind of hard. Okay. It is hard. Yeah. It is hard. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck H and M. Okay. Okay. They seem like I mean it's they've wild. got a they got a party side. They do have a party. They have side. an office yeah. side. Yes, it's business in the it's front. It's business in the front. That's it's right. party, party in, the in the back. It fully is. <laughs> it's a bullet. I, I went in there the other day. I went in there the other day. And seriously, the first things you see when you walk in, they are. It's. I took a picture, actually, because I was just like, I don't know what kind of... 19 night like early 90s pretty woman yes. like <laughs> existence i'm trying yeah. to live but there was yes. a beige like it was like a long line vest and like like tall shorts it was like tan yes like like <laughs> bermuda shorts or something it was like pleated and i was like i, I yeah want it oh and I'm like, but why yeah. like and where would i wear yeah. it to i'll show you the picture because i took a Amazing. picture of the mannequin but it was all like blazers and stuff like that and then mm-hmm. you go like w- to the next room yeah and it's, it's like, like that velvet thought shit like, yes. <laughs> yes. It's, thought like, it's like tube tops crop tops yes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're like they can handle their business they can pay their bills but, but at, at night time but at night time yeah they're going out with their girls we yeah. getting shots yeah shot. Shot, shot, Han- shot hands on the shot, knees shot, shot, shot. oh yes. yeah you're yes. twerking you're yes. twerking big hands H&M. on the knees vibes yes yeah. oh i love it you cannot <laughs> you cannot do that with the banana republic no you cannot <laughs> but no. you can share a nice bottle of wine with banana republic. banana republic's yeah. waspy parents will oh, be watching they, disapprovingly they cannot they can't they cannot no they see one video on they instagram cannot. and they're like you must break up with her tom like yes. no oh, tom <laughs> tom we're taking the yacht out this weekend and I, I i do think i have to marry rent the runway i do think that there's enough variety to keep me interested i think that there's i love their ideals and what yeah. they're doing and everything so i feel like it's progressive and and I just I I think rent the runway is going to be that that partner with you that can grow with you That's over right. time, That's grow right. and change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with you, you're not locked yeah. in. That's if, a with marriage. the Banana Republic, you're that locked in. Banana Republic has been Banana Republic for thirty years, right? Yes. They're not yes. changing. Old not money, changing. and I old money, and I like Banana Republic. Yeah. you can get some really nice pieces. Amen. Yeah, yeah. No shade. Oh no, I, it's one of my staple places yeah. for sure. They're when just I a little inflexible. Shop. That's all. You yeah, know, they uh, they have their minds set. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. It's yeah. it's missionary with no foreplay. Oh, no. Let's no, 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 be no, no, honest. No, no, no. There's that's no, what it is. There is no cunnilingus. No. <laughs> yeah. OK. So I think I'm actually going to do the same thing. Part of me wanted to marry H&M because H- you are going to have fucking fun with yeah. H&M. You really yeah. are. It definitely it- seems like the one with the the most adventure and sense of humor. And H&M oh, is yeah. going to, is going to hold down a job. Like oh, H&M yeah. is going to pay the bills. Like yeah. they are like, you're going to live, but they're irresponsible. Let's be honest. But they're irresponsible. They the probably weekend. litter. I feel like it's going to burn hot and fast. You mm, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like if I married H&M, it would be real good. Like it'd be so fun. We'd have the b- most bomb ass wedding. Yeah. But afterwards it's like we're gonna start bickering over dumb shit yeah and then like yeah. we're gonna end up we're gonna end up splitting up like five years down the yeah. line yeah h&m so, doesn't put the cap back on the toothpaste at all right the little things like that are yeah. gonna start to Tiny get you little like yeah. and everybody's gonna be like i don't understand he seems so great and you're like you don't get it but yeah you don't no, live with I'm sorry h&m exactly. okay yeah <laughs> but you don't live with h&m um so <laughs> i'm gonna definitely fuck them and yeah, you know yeah. what? I think we're actually going to be like we're we're going to fuck, and then even after like yeah. I'm in a serious relationship, we're going to stay friends. Yeah, like H mm-hmm. and M yeah. is going to s- still come around. That's right. Like he's going to be in your friend circle, and it's going to be good. And that's yeah. that's the best way to preserve that relationship. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to do that. I am going to marry Rent the one- Runway because I do feel like 
all the things you said, Christina. They yeah. are going to grow, grow with, with you. you. They're going to change with you. Um, They're there for all the big moments. Yeah. Like, yeah. You need to go to a, a gala, wedding. Yeah. a yeah. wedding. I'm there for you. Yeah. 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 Do you just want, do you just do you want, want sweatpants? Because yeah. we actually have sweatpants. Yeah. 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 They're for you want everything. a sports bra? I got a sports bra for you. Yeah. yeah. You want to just relax on the couch. We got you. Yeah. You got to go to a big thing. We got you. Mm-hmm. Supportive, mm-hmm. caring. Socially responsible. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, they're going to have really nice, socially conscious conversations. Yes. Mm. You know, they're going to, I feel like Rent the Runway would be the kind of husband who could have a conversation with your in laws and disagree about politics, yep. but in a way that's so nice. Right. Yeah. That no one gets mad. That's right. right. That's Wow. the vibe that's, yeah that's big <laughs> wow you know i so i'm gonna marry rent the runway and yeah i'm gonna you know kill banana republic yeah. for, for no other reason than it just our lifestyles I mean, are not good, compatible it's just not compatible and i right. respect you yeah ish yeah, yeah. <laughs> but i respect you for what you are yeah yeah, yeah. You know? i mean and there was a time in my life that i really aspired to be banana republic same and um, same. i'm just not there anymore and I, yeah. I guess that my care level has dropped i will not ever probably own a yacht and that's fine yeah but i me and my responsible husband run the runway will yeah. have a responsible canoe that we love to go out oh in. Yeah. yeah you're gonna kayak and pick up yeah. trash while you do like that house right. yeah yes mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And our lake house is actually all solar paneled. So oh, yeah. we live, it's completely off the You're going to have friends over. We're going to yeah. make s'mores. It's going to yeah. be so yeah. much fun, you guys. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's the, I, I cannot, do, like I, there's nothing to disagree with here. We've, we've said mm-hmm. all the things you're going to marry rent the runway because it's, it's the right choice. It's there for you. Responsible. If you gain weight, it's fine. Oh yeah. Yes. If you lose weight, it's fine. Mm-hmm. He loves you the same. It's going you're to, beautiful. it's got something for you. <laughs> beautiful wow yeah you're, you're beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah ah oh, yeah perfect yeah and you gotta fuck h&m come on yeah, i come mean on. come on guys. Guys. come on <laughs> it's gonna be a fun time <laughs> it's gonna be fun it's gonna be uh, h&m is should sponsor our palm springs trip yeah for real. <laughs> because the thing is you're right like h&m it seems so put together but if you've ever been in the dressing rooms at h&m ooh, you're like ooh. madness like there's mm-hmm. just like racks of clothes everywhere and you're like this is what living with h&m would be like yes. oh <laughs> yes you nailed oh it oh my god forget it i can't <laughs> nope you're right it's a it's a fucking move on <laughs> yeah you guys want to take five and we'll come back with stories Sounds yes. good. good. Hey, everybody. Today's episode is brought to you by one of our favorites, Best Fiends. Yeah. We don't know about you, but we are so excited to be able to get out and do more and sit by the pool, especially. One of my favorite activities to do when I'm hanging out by the pool, just lounging, is to get out my phone and play a little bit of Best Fiends. It's so much fun. It's, you know, something I can pick up and go to very easily. It's a totally casual game that is easy to just pick up whenever I want. Yeah, I love the tons of cute characters that you can collect. Um, Personally, I think I'm also just one of those weird ones that thinks that the slugs are super cute too. all (laughs) the bad guys that you get to fight. I am struggling to catch up to Cassie. I keep comparing our school scores by the pool and hoping that I will pass her. Um, write in and let us know how far along you are. And they're constantly updating it too, so it never gets old. Yeah, that's my favorite thing is that there's a new land challenge or something brand new basically every single day with this game. And it's so fun to play with your friends and your family while, while we're all trying to get reconnected. So... You can download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play today. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Cheers! I don't know about you, but I'm dying to get back to the gym. It's been so long. I'm starting to miss the little things. Like, do you know what I would give to wipe someone else's sweat off the machines right now? Or to hear my trainer shout at me to get another rep in. Vaccination is the most effective way to help prevent COVID-19 and to get back to the good times. Find a COVID-19 vaccine location near you at vaccines.gov. That's V-A-C-C-I-N-E-S dot gov. Support for this podcast comes from Invent Together. According to studies, less than 13% of all inventors who hold a U.S. patent are women. Black and Hispanic college graduates patent at half the rate of their white counterparts. But we can fix that 
By increasing participation in innovation and patenting by underrepresented groups, it would quadruple the number of American inventors and increase annual GDP by almost $1 trillion. Invent Together is a coalition of organizations, companies, universities, and concerned citizens committed to ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to invent and patent. Because the more diverse the American patent system gets, the stronger and more successful our nation will become. What can you do to help diverse inventors patent and unleash economic opportunity? Find out at inventtogether.org. Learn more and take action today. And we're back. All right, I've got the tainted love this week, so I will kick us off with stories. (laughs) Okay, this one's fun. Kind of. I met a guy on Hinge who seemed pretty cool, and we shared a lot of the same interests. I'm a self I'm a self proclaimed feminist. It's on all of my social media and dating app bios, so that there is no confusion about this. It's a smart way to go. Exactly. Yeah. If it really matters to you, put it in your bio. That's right. Absolutely. And he seemed to be on the same page politically and ideologically. When we decided to go on a date after a few days of talking, he let me decide where we should go to dinner. And then after he would pick the activity seemed fair to me. So I agreed. I chose this little restaurant around the corner from my place. I picked this place because it had a little bit of everything. So there would definitely be something for him to choose from. We got there around the same time and things seemed to be getting off to a good start. He looked like his picture and conversation was comfortable enough for a first meetup. We get seated and after a couple of minutes of chit chat, our server arrives with menus and a basket of bread for the table. Now, I hadn't eaten lunch, so I was starving at this point and was about to reach into the basket before it even hit the table when I heard my date say, um, no thank you. And he waved the bread away. No, oh, no. 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 <laughs> it, it's already done. If you are turning no. down free fucking bread. No. Bread, I, I knew this manna was gonna... from the heavens. Bread mm. is, um, Christina, first of all, yeah. amazing. Sec- oh, my God. And, and don't speak for me. I sir. knew that this, this story is going to trigger you both, but Christina especially. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am like already. I love it. Your Spicy. face right now. You are like hot. <laughs> Dude, I always it's like I will go to restaurants sometimes because I'm like, they got that good bread. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell yeah. They there got are certain that restaurants. good bread. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Like I bread you will can go buy anywhere. But. I will go to Red Lobster. <gasps> Ooh. Cheddar Though, Bay Biscuits. Exactly. I, can make exactly. A, I make a mean Cheddar Bay Biscuit. I don't even like see. I don't even like seafood. Yeah. yeah. So Cassie, if you want to make me yeah. biscuits and save I me will. the trip to a place that smells like fish, I appreciate it. Yeah. I um, got you. The server was obviously confused, as was I, because he said, sorry, what? My date replied, no bread, thanks. And without looking at the server or I, picked up his menu and started reading. The server and I exchanged a sideways glance before he shrugged and took the bread away, much to my disappointment. He's You're like, like, no. <laughs> bread. <laughs> as soon as... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> as soon as the server walked away, he put down his menu that I guess he was pretending to read and said with a look of absolute disgust on his face, I re- <laughs> I wish restaurants would stop serving that shit. Bread is complete poison for <gasps> your body. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, All right. No. Well, now, oh, no. Here we go. Now, my family is Italian. Oh, no. See? Bread is essentially part of our DNA. It's mm-hmm. fucking life, dude. I yeah. was gobsmacked. I mean, who doesn't like bread? Right. I get it if you can't have it because of an allergy or something, but poison? Come on. Yeah. Not picking Sir. up on the look of absolute horror on my face, he proceeded to go on a tirade uh. about how all of our food is genetically modified, but especially bread, and any and everyone should avoid pasta, cakes, cookies, and all bread-related foods. You're like, oh my God, okay, you Mr. are Keto. sucking the joy out of everything, everything right now. Like, listen. And listen, people- live your life the way you want to, but why you got to be, why is it got to be poison to me? Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Listen, people have legit fucking allergies. That Get shit it. exists. True. Yeah. It's real. They have to eat what they have to eat and that's fine. But like you don't get to decide what I get to eat. That's right. I don't have that allergy. Well, I don't share that viewpoint. And I, don't and I think, want that fucking bread. Yeah, it's <laughs> not it's not even that he has an allergy. No. Yeah. He's you just know poison. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Trying cool, to cool. find a way to contribute to the conversation, I asked 
what about homemade bread? No. And he went on to uh say that homemade bread was only okay if made with raw flour and all organic ingredients. Otherwise, it was just as bad as store-bought and should be avoided. At this point, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this date. (laughs) I said, so you never eat pizza? The look on his face. He was horrified, (laughs) appalled that I would ask such a question. What? He slowly, silently shook his head. (laughs) He then went on to say that he had grown up in Canada and was happy Uh. to be living in the United States now because at least when people eat bread here, he's not stuck being taxed with the inevitable medical bills that would result from their carb-related health problems. Oh, no. He was, quote, tired of paying for other people's negligence wow from eating bread no <laughs> you guys listen there are it, that's the thing you said it perfectly at the beginning of this story when you're like if it matters to you put it in your bio no bread if you are somebody that is passionate about the food that goes into your body because that's fine some people are some people are super into fitness some people love to run 5k's some people are like I love to make smoothies in the morning out of kale or whatever. Yeah, there's a strong passion coming that, out of him for this. Exactly. Like, you know, like, That's fine. Put it in your bio. Be bio. Like, I'm very passionate about eating healthy or living healthy. That's even completely then, fine. And there are tons of people out there that he can match with that they he doesn't have to steal bread from. Good luck finding someone who will consume no bread-related products no ever. No pizza. Ugh, no. Ever. We're, we're done. We're done. Because that's the thing. You don't want to date somebody like that if you don't share those views because anytime you took a bite of something you'll feel exactly yeah. very insecure you'll feel very it will lead to disaster bad places he yes sounds hideous and and yes because when the server came back to the table i think i was white as a sheet my date ordered a salad with no croutons of course and dressing on the side At this point, I was terrified to eat in front of this bread-hating maniac, so I ordered a small cup of their most bland soup and a water. (laughs) Because, yeah, you have to be scared. Like, you're like, I can't order a cocktail. I can't order... Because you at this point, you've got to be nervous that he's going to be judging, like, absolutely everything. Yeah. Ugh. When it arrived, I wolfed it down as quickly as I could. He didn't seem to notice or care about my discomfort. And after the meal, he was eager to take me to the activity he had planned, Uh. which was supposed to be a surprise. I did not want to spend one more second with this guy and definitely didn't want to see what his idea of a surprise date was. I told him I wasn't feeling very well. We're going to run the Boston Marathon. No. no, But (laughs) we're going to watch a documentary about why bread is bad. Oh, (laughs) totally. Thank you. Um, I uh, downloaded this documentary for... Watch. We're going to sit in my um, car and watch it on my oh phone. Oh, God. Uh, uh, I told him I wasn't feeling very well and would have to cut our date short. He protested, saying we were having, quote, such a good time. But I insisted I needed to go. Once I got home, I sent a quick text letting him know I didn't think we were a good match. And then I blocked his number. Life is too short to yes. spend it with someone who hates bread and yep. doesn't believe health care is a human right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Goodbye. Perfect. <laughs> Goodbye. A goodbye. Well, um, my story is another lesson oh. this week. Mine is also the lesson in put it in your bio. Put oh, it in your bio. Go. There's a the takeaway. Put it in All your right. bio. Match with this girl a couple years ago on Tinder. Conversation was great, and I knew she was a real person since we had a mutual acquaintance from long ago, so I was sure she wasn't a catfish. We seemed to hit it off right away. However, we couldn't get our schedules to match up for a first date initially. Two weeks later, I had bought tickets to see John Wick 3 with my my movie buddy. Uh, when my movie buddy d- dropped out at the last second, and I was stuck holding an extra ticket for later that night. In a last ditch effort to not go alone, I asked if she wanted to go, knowing it was a super last minute, a late night showing, and um, and we had yet to meet in person. To my surprise, she said yes and agreed. I would pick her up in a few hours before the movie started. I go to pick her up that evening, park by her place, and text her, I was there. She replies, one minute, and I suddenly get a call from my movie buddy apologizing again for having to bail. I told him, no worries. I have a date lined up, and she's on her way to the car currently, so I have to go. She opens the door and gets in, and just as I was hanging up, or she gets in the car just as I was hanging up, so I didn't notice anything right away, but as I turned to say hello, that's when I saw it. The biggest baby bump 
I'd ever seen. <gasps> oh. She decides to come clean that she was actually six months pregnant and had failed to mention that anywhere on her profile or during our prior conversations out of fear that she'd be judged. Okay. The thing is, <laughs> we discussed this in our last episode. Yeah. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. That's right. Somebody will want to date you. That's right. Yeah. Just be honest because then you're going to, like, if you're not, you're going to end up in situations like this. And it's really not fair to the other person. Like, yeah, it's going to make you feel like shit. It makes them feel like shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just shitty. I mean, it's just awkward, too. Like, it's awkward. You're completely not expecting this, right? Right. Uh, better yet, she still lived with her baby's daddy. Ooh. Um, but him and his new girlfriend were moving out. So it was totally okay. I wasn't sure how to react so in the moment because I was so caught off guard. But the movie was starting soon and I didn't want to waste the tickets. So I just went ahead with it. But boy, was it super awkward. Safe to say things never went past the first day. The kicker was a couple months later. The baby. But <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> a couple months later, I'd seen her again on another dating app, but this time her second profile picture was her ultrasound photo with the caption, quote, looking for a daddy. Oh, so at, least, so at least she's being honest now, I guess. I mean, but OK, oh, oh, maybe geez. not like that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, oh. no to any of that. So that's, you're saying that's not uh, how she should be. OK, OK, maybe. Um focus on the new thing in your life for a little bit right yeah, yeah. maybe maybe take maybe. a break see a breaks yeah, yeah she's she's get right back out there yeah, yeah. i don't know Oof. i was super horny when i was pregnant so maybe i, maybe. <laughs> I have ac- actually heard that as yeah. well oh hey i was like nine months of just doing it nice wow <laughs> all right well um mine kind of weirdly aligns to like what we were talking about uh earlier so i'll just dive in okay First, a little introduction on me, and then the next paragraph is the date. Uh, I am not a good sign reader, so most of this is probably on me. Oh, I'm a big guy, but not horribly big, just a little bit more trouble in the stairs kind of big. And I get stressed easily. This leads to intense heat bursts and obvious sweating. And I'm bald. So no hiding that sweat under your hairs or whatever. Just those very visible, shiny little drops on my head. And when I sense my heat rising up, I feel anxious because I know a couple of minutes from now, I'll be looking all weird and sweaty. This causes a hellish, vicious cycle. So I go to her apartment in midwinter. Minus 20 degree weather. Oh, wow. Dressed in shorts and a t-shirt to help me out battling those anxiety induced oh, heat rushes. Wow. Yay. She lives on the third floor. Oh, no. I'm already sweating just thinking about how sweaty I'll be after those stairs. Oh, Honey, no. I feel so bad. His anxiety. I, I hope know. he's seeing a therapist. Hesitating to knock on her door. So I take a breather once I'm up. And when I'm in, I ask for her bathroom so that I could freshen myself up. Basic routine I've done countless times. Take off shirt, turn on cold water, apply it to my neck, armpits, head, face, forearms, then dry off and go back feeling fresh. But as I do this, I think if I take too long here, she'll think I'm shitting first thing on a first date. (laughs) Oh, no. That's a no-go. But if I leave too early... I might get hot too soon and I can't use the bathroom twice so early and then I'll be stuck freaking stressing out already. He's overthinking. He's an overthinker. Very clearly. Yes. Like you don't need to you don't you don't need to think about it that hard. You really, 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 really don't. I know. I just I'm like are you me though? <laughs> oh no! I am like yeah. so Playing consequences again. Feel exactly, yeah, exactly. So I come out and meet her in her living room. That's also her bedroom. She has a couch in front of her bed, and that's where we sit to begin with. I notice the window is open in winter. Maybe she's hot. Maybe it's a trick to go under her covers at some point, or say that she's cold, opening the door for me to warm her up. See again, he's really uh, he's reading just, a lot. Really into reading a lot. Every <laughs> single thing. She gets up from the couch and goes on her bed real seductively, oh. looking back at me. Clear oh. sign here. 
So I get up, but as I do, we keep going on our conversation and she says how she doesn't like to be touched by strangers. Oh. So I'm not about to jump in her bed after she said that, but uh, fortune is in my favor for once. She has a cat house next to her bed with two cute little fluff balls. Oh. So I go and pet them instead of joining her. <laughs> and I stood there for a whole 30 minutes. Oh. Petting her cats, oh. after which she kicked me out because her ex was coming over, apparently. Wait, oh. what? Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, I tell you, I cried in my car on the ride home oh, after babe. this fiasco. Oh, He's just, he's two in his head. He's yes. two in his head. I he's know. not a stranger. He's someone who's there for a date. She wouldn't have gone into her room if she didn't want him to come in there with her. Like, yeah. he's just way too into his in his head. And I I definitely I I wanted to share that story because I'm just like, dude, that mental monologue is something oh, yeah. I identified with so much. I'm like, I do this because of this and this and this and then it could lead to this. But if I did that and, and then oh, by yeah. that point, how much time has gone by? Yeah. And I can tell you, yes, as someone who also has a tendency to do that, yeah. it's not necessary most of the time. Like most of the time. Absolutely. You do not need to think that hard about this situation. I I think a lot about the fact that some people do not have internal monologues and I can't imagine what life must be like right to yeah. not have a constant not right. have your Narrative. voice <laughs> narrating constantly your life. narrating every yeah. single fucking thing you do <laughs> or not even narrating just popping in sometimes to be like hey do you remember really that true? geo metro exactly. that you first and i'm like wait what <laughs> remember that really fucking awkward embarrassing thing that you did like yeah. three months ago <laughs> oh, okay God. bye bye <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god it's so true <laughs> just wanted to make sure you were still aware okay <laughs> you did that thing remember, remember. <laughs> and that person they remember okay bye <laughs> they remember they don't remember by the they way don't. They, they don't they absolutely don't, they don't. only mm -hmm. you do tell my brain that okay <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> all right this story uh oh i got it i first heard it on a criminal episode <gasps> which oh. will of Phoebe. course be so much better than what I can do. Here. Use your best Phoebe Judge voice. So, yes. I'm Phoebe Judge, and this is Criminal. Ugh, okay. It. It's, her voice is butter. But if you want to go listen to that, it is episode 166 over at Criminal. It's, it's great. Of course it is, because Criminal is an amazing podcast. So I got a lot of information from that and a New York Post article. Nice. Okay. Let's jump right in. Okay. On November 12th, 2012, there was an abandoned house in Accomack County, Georgia, that caught on fire. When the local volunteer firefighters received the call, they didn't think much of it. You know, the house was old and no one had lived in it for years. And it was like a breezy, dry night. So they were like, hey, maybe some kids were like lighting bonfires or something. And, right. the, and the house went up. It's not that big a deal. Deborah Clark, however, who owned the home across the field from the abandoned house, was certain that it was something else. And she placed when she placed her emergency call, she told the 911 dispatcher, somebody done set the house on fire. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. So the firefighters put out the fire and they returned to the firehouse where they start putting away their equipment and cleaning up. So, you know, they're just like, okay, it's like a routine night. We did this. We're going to get cleaned up. And then the way that it worked was... It was all volunteer, so uh, they would get a page on their phones or on their pagers, mm -hmm. and then they would go into the firehouse, and then after they were done with doing whatever they were doing, they would go back home. Like, right, no one right. really stayed at the firehouse. So they were getting ready to, like, go back home, but as soon as they start to get undressed, another call comes in. And this time, um, a woman is called to report that two abandoned farm buildings on her property were up in flames. Oh. So this was about 12 miles from the first fire. So the firefighters headed back out. As they were fighting that fire, a third call came in. Hmm. Another abandoned building. Feels now, like a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Accomack County, Virginia, and the surrounding areas are small. And they're about an hour away from any metropolitan era areas. So they're an hour away from Virginia Beach and some other city. And because of that, they don't have an actual fire department. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all volunteer all the time. Mm. And um, they average about two fires a week. They're at three 
in one feels, night. Feels like a lot. That even sounds for like you got a fire a, bug. Yeah, it's right. Like, feels like two a week seems high too. If I'm honest, maybe it was a month. Could have been. Maybe I took that my makes, notes wrong. I mean, like for yeah, I don't know. It's, but both I mean, feels high. or if we're talking about any yeah. fires, because maybe yeah. it's like I think small fires happen. Well, maybe sure, somebody calls true. the fire department because they, they agreed to fire. left the stove on. Yeah, or something, yeah. something yeah. like that. Smells <clears> gas. I doubt it's two house fire like houses up in flames right. a week you right know? yeah yeah so the next night they had another and then the next they had another <laughs> and the local fire chief was starting to call around other local volunteer firehouses and asking if they've had fires as well and they had so uh, he calls the fire marshal and he tells them i think we've got an arsonist yeah. right like somebody is going around and they're lighting up these abandoned buildings mm-hmm. there's tons of abandoned buildings i mean they got they're abandoned yeah. yeah. So over the next six months, they would respond to nearly 90 fires. Oh, wow. Holy mm-hmm. shit. So there was an app in 2012 that would broadcast police scanner activity. And for a period of time, this small place, Acmac County, Virginia, was the busiest community on this app that was listening for police activity. It was ahead of New York City and it was ahead oh of Los Angeles God. because everybody was listening, trying to figure out who this arsonist was. Wow. Because they were completely exhausting their resources. It yeah. was all volunteer fire departments and they're being called every fucking day right yeah and people in Acmac were terrified because all the buildings that were targeted were abandoned however there was real risk of neighboring properties there's like all these big you know fields and stuff um neighboring properties catching fire and for some people who maybe lived in less like well-kept homes that had like lots of junk outside or whatever Mm -hmm. they would put signs up that says someone lives here because they were afraid oh gosh that the arsonist would think their house was abandoned wow. and lighted on fire. Yeah. And um, there were Facebook groups with names like who's trying to burn down Acomat County. Uh, oh, they started geez. popping up and volunteer firefighters basically moved into the station, um, you know, because they were running on no sleep from being up all night fighting wow. these fires. And then because they were volunteer they all had day jobs. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. like they're working, they're fighting fires at night and then they're going into work mm. the next day and like just not, not getting a break at all. So state fire investigators were brought in and they believed that it was someone local. So they made a list of buildings that the arsonist might target next, like abandoned buildings. They went to Bass Pro and they bought all of the camouflage tents they could find and they started setting up all night campouts with firefighters uh, to keep watch in pup tents behind these abandoned properties with night vision goggles and walkie talkies just hoping to Mm -hmm. catch the person who was setting these fires so they're like all these volunteer firefighters are like sleeping in tents like to try and before they have to like go up and the next morning and sell insurance exactly or whatever exactly So after (laughs) going to school, I know. Like God, Mr. Johnson looks terrible. (laughs) Um, After four months, so they had set up cameras. Law enforcement had set up cameras like all around Acomac, right? And they were um, motion censored in around these abandoned buildings. And when the sensor went off, they would get a like ping to their phones, and then they could go like check the cameras. So they got one after four months, um, and. They went and looked at the camera and it showed a shadowy a shadowy figure walking away from the scene of the crime. And from the silhouette, it was clear that, you know, to the fire marshals that it was a woman. Oh, mm. unusual. They were like, that is strange. It is unusual because women aren't usually arsonists. No, yeah. right. It's not common. And so at this point, investigators had already kind of been working with this theory that there might have been two arsonists involved, uh, a driver and somebody who was lighting the fires. And they speculated that it was maybe like a father-son duo or two brothers, but it never occurred to them that one of them would be a woman. Like they just it yeah. hadn't occurred to them. Okay. So. Tanya Bundick was born and raised in Accomack County. Her family had actually been there for generations dating back to the 1600s. She'd had a pretty rough childhood. She grew up in poverty with an abusive father. But even so, she was always popular in school and with her peers. She was 40 years old with two children and described as somebody who was like a really devoted mother, really good mother. Um, She was always at school functions, bake sales, things like that. 
She was very likable, extroverted, and actually, you know, they called her like the queen of her circle. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, people just wanted to be around her. And in the evening, she was a regular at a local bar called Shuckers. Yeah. uh, Where she (laughs) had all tracks. Yeah, the tracks, right? Mm -hmm. Where she had lots of friends. You know, people described her as being like kind of magnetic. Like everyone wanted to buy her drinks. She was like that kind of That's the kind of magnet I like to be. Mm -hmm. 50 bucks says friends in low places is on the box in that place. It plays every single time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Every night. That's how they close the night out. That's yeah. how you yeah. know it's last call. There's, there a, there's a Joe Diffie on there. There's some <laughs> Alan Jackson. At the Shuckers. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So one night at Shuckers, she meets a man who's a couple years younger than her named Charlie Smith. And Charlie was described as kind of bashful and shy. He's likable, s- simple, Kind of this like likable, simple screw up is kind of how he's framed. Uh, he had trouble with drugs in the past, yeah. but seemed to be turning his life around and people like liked him. He was described as kind of like self-effacing, you know, mm. and just, you know, I, I get this kind of like eeyore uh, quality. Aww. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, with this guy. And he owned a body shop and was known to do like really good work. Uh, and he also volunteered with the fire department from a very young age. Yeah. And because of his knowledge of cars, he was very helpful to have on hand in any situation that required the jaws of life uh, because he knew exactly where the weak spots were, where, you know, you could easily mm-hmm. get the car ripped apart or whatever so charlie thought tanya was way out of his league so he never approached her even though they were both regulars at shuckers uh and a mutual friend approached him one night or a friend of tanya's rather approached him one night and said uh tanya would like to have your number in her phone oh (laughs) so he was like well okay Hey then, <laughs> and he's like, I he's would like, like my phone number to um, be also in appear in her phone. phone. That sounds good. Also, yeah. I'm always wearing this shirt from now on. Yes, <laughs> right, right, right. I must be looking real good. Yeah, <laughs> feeling soups fly. Yeah. So she called him. <laughs> all of this sounds very like small towny yep. to me. She I know. she called him later that week and asked him to stop by her apartment to help set up a new PlayStation for her sons. <laughs> She's okay. Like, Come okay. on by, Charlie. <laughs> um, and after that, they were inseparable. And Charlie gave up his spot as a, vi- a volunteer firefighter. He doesn't have time. Okay. This is some small town. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. It really is. Wow. So Charlie moved in with Tanya and her sons. They got a chihuahua together and they painted their bedroom pink and purple, Tanya's favorite colors. Uh, they got a <laughs> Cassie, you're gonna hate all of us. They got I, a I they got do. a joint Facebook account under the name T Char. Please. D- uh, <laughs> <laughs> joint couple facebook accounts so are much. the worst the literal worst and not only did they have a joint couple facebook account teacher but they also wrote messages back and forth to each other on their joint account which okay. has got to be the most okay. annoying listen, thing i hate listen this so okay much. my mom well my dad doesn't have a facebook account he has my mom's where he goes on, my mom's Facebook account looks like it's somebody that has a split personality because it's like, it'll have those memes where it's like, I love my grandkids. And then it'll be like something about how like, you know, something political right, right. underneath it. And you're like, who is this what? person? Yeah. It's two people. Yeah. Because, and my dad, thankfully, has started signing. When he posts under yeah. under my my mom, he'll dot, 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 Sign his his name amazing. under it, so you know. Dude, amazing. It's just, like, just amazing. get your own account. Like, why are amazing. you doing this? Like, why are you doing this? Well, it's not. hilarious to me. Also, you guys live together. Why do you, dude? Let me tell you. Okay, so I'm listening to the criminal episode, and Phoebe Judge in her Phoebe Judge voice is reading one of the exchanges, no. and it's like. One post was Tanya writing made chicken for dinner. And then underneath that, in one of the comments, it was like, Char here, chicken was delicious, babe. And it's like, why? <laughs> like, you live in the same house. <laughs> and who else? Why are you posting it? Care? Who else wants to know about this? Who? Anything. This is junk. This is junk. Nobody cares that you had chicken for dinner. <laughs> no one. 
<laughs> There's no reason. And, and literally no one cares no. if you liked it. Yeah. No. I, this is not information that needs to be broadcast. <laughs> they're the worst. To millions and millions of people. No reason. Oh, my okay. God. So, Charlie, they, they, this couple is the worst. Like, it's the most. I, it's the <laughs> least. The last kind of relationship I would ever want to yeah. be in. Oh, so yeah. So Charlie had some spare space in his auto body shop. So he asked if Tanya wanted to start her own business and use the space. That way they could be together all the time. Oh, no. Which is unnecessary. No, it's awful. So Tanya God, took I him. I this. I couldn't hate this more. It, you you can. Oh, um, I can if it's an essential oil business that she's. It's not, but it's. It's, it's close. Herbal to- life. So Tanya took him up on the offer and opened a boutique to sell going out clothes, and she called it a tiny taste of toot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Toot was her nickname that her dad had given her, and she called her clothing shop a tiny taste <laughs> of toot. <laughs> it sounds like what happens to me fart. every time I try <laughs> anal. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> That's how when you want to dabble in like tossing someone's salad. Yeah. Like, you get a <laughs> tiny <laughs> taste of toot. <laughs> I'm fucking dead. Oh my God. Why would you think that's a good idea? How would you, as a bank person, when someone's trying to like set up the LLC, not fucking laugh at that person and be like, are you I'm sorry, did you say absolutely sure? Did you say two toot? <laughs> did you was there's a lot of alliteration there? Did you why? say tiny taste of toot? And why is it a taste? Why is it a why taste? Is it a taste? <laughs> Oh my god! And why is it tiny? I don't oh god! Know. Why oh any of god. these things? It's horrible. Oh, what the and fuck also, is it's happening? Like, it's an I auto like body. It's an auto body oh, shop no. slash going out clothes store. Like it's weird. Yeah. Oh my god! Is the auto body shop called like Big Horn or something? Oh, and it's god. like Big Horn and a tiny teeth too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know. I said I needed to go shopping. I'm gonna put it out here right now that that's not a not place where you I go? think. That would cater to yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. You don't want yeah. affordable going out it clothes? It sounds like La La Rue or whatever it is. Or, or Lulu Ro or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, oh, exactly. my God. Lord. I said La La Rue. <laughs> so Tomato. things are going great. For things Charlie sound and Tanya, amazing. You know, joint Facebook account. Pink and purple bedroom. Chihuahua. Tiny taste of toot. Things are going well. <laughs> Stop saying it. <laughs> so oh, Charlie... Fuck. Charlie proposed at the end of 2011 and he was so nervous. So, like oh. he's he's the guy from your last story. Like he's sweating. He's going in and out from the parking lot because he's so nervous to propose to Tanya and he's so nervous that he ends up passing her the ring under the table instead of getting down on on one knee like he had planned. And so Tanya said, "Yes, but only if she got a different proposal." <laughs> oh. So they decided that he would repropose on her birthday at Shuckers in front of all of their friends. Oh, no. So okay. they bought a yellow Barbie cake because Charlie, Tanya liked it when Charlie told her that she looked like Barbie. And um, they coordinated their outfits matching yellow with the cake. I we, really need to see wait. pictures of these <laughs> I, people I immediately, immediately no, if no, not wait, wait, sooner. No, I need to know what they wait, look like. Okay, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. But I am like, I, I feel like I know, but I need to know, you know? Yes. So they started planning the wedding. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> wait, they were. Wait. It's, but, yes. But go back. Um, yes. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. They wore yellow. <laughs> yeah. They had to match the cake. Um, Why the cake needed to be yellow? I don't know. I don't know, Cassie. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a lot, is what it's, I'm feeling. It's a lot, and this is coming from somebody who has like neon green hair and neon green yellow well, nails right now. I mean, it's a but big taste of toot at this point. I, it's it's <laughs> full uh, yellow. I mean, and what, I like yellow. I, okay, I love yellow actually. Okay. But but think of yourself in a yellow outfit. Okay, okay, you got that. I can get that. I love you in yellow. I can see. Thanks this. so much. <laughs> Now imagine you have that outfit on and Tony also, also same shade yellow and the cake 
Yellow. I, a Barbie cake. I'm having oh. a really like hard time in, putting a, like a man an in a birthday. full yellow outfit. Right. Well, maybe it was just a yellow shirt. Even still. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. All right. Also, he's Sorry, a redhead, and I feel like red and yellow Ooh, yeah. is a lot. Okay. But. Woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> so they start planning the wedding, and they wanted a big wedding. Of Over course. 300 guests. Holy shit. It was shit. going to be. Are there 300 people in this town? It was going to be the party of the century. I guess. Like she told people, even though invites hadn't gone out yet, that they should respond as soon as possible because security was going to be tight. Okay. I mean, I guess a tiny taste okay. of toot is going well. Doing if they can well. Afford. Toot toot. Uh, they wanted to have the reception at Shuckers, which I did not picture. For 300 as a place. people. It's, maybe it's a big place because I did not picture it I as a big place. I pictured it as like the barrel. Yeah, like quirky. Yeah. 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 Um, the wedding theme would be no of course November the rain theme. after the Guns N' Roses music video. <laughs> I'm sorry. In which I think the bride dies. Yeah, so. it definitely does. And I'm like, I- can I actually <laughs> steal this idea? I mean, <laughs> if Eric and I took that seriously, if we did like, oh my Please God. Please do that dress. Oh my God. That dress with just sh- like a mullet. It's Nothing. short in the front and long I have, forever. I have never heard of someone doing a wedding theme based on a music video in my I mean, life. Oh I my guess god. if you're going to do a music video, at least it's one with a wedding in it. Oh my god. Wow. Mm. Wow. So, <clears throat> Charlie was said to have done anything to please Tanya, clearly. Uh, I mean, she wore, he wore yellow. Yeah. yeah. He, wore, he painted their bedroom pe- pur- purple and pink. Uh, he reproposed to her. Um, even if it meant working all hours and picking up odd jobs to try and afford the large wedding that she wanted. Oh. And if anyone criticized Tanya in any way or questioned whether she was asking too much of him, he cut them off. Oh, <clears throat> okay. a goodbye. Yeah, he's just like, I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Tanya's an actual angel walking on earth. Oh. So, okay, back to the fires. <laughs> Forgot all about the fires. <laughs> and he, you gave us a lot to Digest. literally like. I'm like, fi- what fires? I'm still Our on fires a, important a taste anymore. of two. <laughs> I so. swear to God, I can't not get past taste of two. <laughs> taste of two. <laughs> Tainted love on taste of two. <laughs> okay, so the fires. <laughs> They're raging out of control. Yeah, yeah, right? that's going on too. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> that, she wore a shirt. That's how they found out. It was like to taste the tune on it. Yeah. Mm. They're like, mm. so at one point, the arsonists burned down an old abandoned uh, abandoned resort that took the firefighters six hours to put out because it was like a whole resort. Why there's so many Why abandoned a buildings? Lot of, uh, where are the three hundred people coming from? I, out of town. I don't know. Virginia Beach. They're coming up uh, from yeah. Virginia Beach. Yeah. Um, Norfolk. Everybody. Newport <laughs> News. Everybody coming in. <laughs> the next night after, you know, this one, they set another fire and the firefighters were getting burnt out. No pun intended. Oh, yeah. that's done. I'm well, sorry. I typed then, it sh- and I was like, I have no other. I, You're like, I have I no other way to phrase this. But, th- you know, they're yeah. stretched very thin. There yes. you go. On April 1st, 2013, some men who had come up from other parts of Virginia to help out and volunteer, they were camping out in one of the pup tents when they saw a van pull up to the abandoned house they were watching. A figure gets out. It runs up to the building, pulls out a rag and a lighter, shoves it under the board and lights it on fire before running back to the van and driving away. So the volunteers are like, finally, right? Yeah. They radio it in and police pull the van over half a mile from the scene. Charlie and Tanya are in the van and they were taken in, separated and questioned separately about the situation. Tanya said that they had been out for a drive, which is something that they often do. Just, you know, back road driving. Mm -hmm. When Charlie asked if she could stop the van so he could get out and pee, which she did. And then for some reason... Because you do this when you let someone out of the car to pee. She's like, I'm going to do a lap. So she left him there, she says, to pee, did a lap, and then came and picked him back up after he was done peeing. And that she had no idea that he had lit the fire or if he had lit any of the other fires, right? Huh. So when Charlie is questioned, 
he basically comes clean immediately. So he's being questioned. I mean, it's a small town. So he knows these people. Like yeah, they probably right. went to high school together. Like yeah. there are people who are like questioning him. So he basically comes clean right away. Yeah, he's like, I can't. It's <laughs> yeah. a burden. I can't carry it anymore. <laughs> he's like, I'm a simple man. All right. I did it. So he comes clean right away and he admits sole responsibility. He takes all responsibility, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, T isn't the kind of person who's going to take a promise ring. No. Nor is she the kind of person who's going to take any of the heat. No. Yeah. So the men questioning him, you know, like I said, they've known Charlie pretty much his whole life and they know he's holding back and that, you know, they suspect he's trying to protect Tanya. So they keep pushing him and they want him to at least tell, uh, tell them what would push him to do something like this, right? They're like, look, we've known you for a long time. This doesn't seem like who you are. Mm-hmm. So like, why would you set almost 90 fires? Yeah, you yeah. Know? what you doing, bro? Yeah. So after hours of questioning and around uh, two in the morning, he finally breaks down and tells them why he's setting all these fires. So he starts I'm pulling telling, up. I know. Mm-hmm. He starts telling the men. So, right, they're like, why are you setting all these fires? He's like, okay, I'll tell you. And they're like, all right. They're leaning in like Cassie's leaning in now. Mm-hmm. And he starts telling them about how much he loves Tanya. And they're like, cool, okay. cool, cool. Yeah. What does this have to do with anything? Right. And he's like, I know I'm a good for nothing. I know that Tanya is too good for me. Mm-hmm. And he's telling them that he's terrified of losing Tanya, right? He's like, I've had girlfriends in the past. I I never felt like I was really in love before meeting Tanya. And I'm so in love with her. Um, And he couldn't believe his luck that he landed someone so incredibly out of his league, right? And he speculates that his disbelief at having landed someone like her manifested itself in a terrible way. And he told the cops... The moment I fell in love with her, my dick stopped working. Uh, mm -hmm. So he couldn't please Tanya sexually. And by the time of November um, 2012, the two hadn't had sex in over a year. And Charlie was very, very afraid that he was going to lose Tanya because they weren't having sex. Um, you know, and you know, they have doctors, right? Yeah. In got Virginia. medicine. Yeah. yeah in for Virginia, this. they have doctors. Um, so one night, they were, I, <laughs> I mean, you, you want to get that. Ch- ch- you should out. That's, figure out what's going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That could be medical. And yeah. I need you to work on that. Yeah. You know, so, it won't help. Well, so one night on one of their drives, Charlie tells Tanya, like, I will do whatever you want to make you happy. Like, I just want to make you happy. I don't want to lose you. Right. And so as they're driving, they drive past this abandoned house. And Tanya says, I want you to burn that house down. So Charlie's confused. He thinks she's joking. And so he laughs, but she's insistent. And she says, I want you to burn that house down. So he pulls over, still kind of thinking that maybe she's joking. He gets out of the car. He walks up to the house. He pretends to set it on fire. And then he gets back in the car and tells her that he's done it. And he says for the first time in a really long time, Tanya seemed happy, that she seemed lighter somehow, that she was joyful about the fact that he had set this fire, right? And so... You know, she kept in asking him, you know, they get back in the car, they start driving and he she keeps asking, drive, I want to drive back around. I want to see the house like she wants to see it on fire. And so eventually, of course, he has to admit to her, like, I didn't actually set it on fire. Yeah, <laughs> like, I didn't know that, like, you really wanted me to set this house on fire. And so she was deflated, like exasperated, disappointed, um, gutted. Right. So he's he's hurt now. Like, he's like, oh, I don't you know, she seems so happy. Like, I don't want to, like, upset her. So. They drive back to the house and they light the fire together and burn the house down. And they would burn down 66 houses after this. Wow. Wow. And it's not clear why setting the fires seemed to make Tanya so happy, but it did. It seemed to be the only thing that did. And the funny thing was it didn't actually help their sex life. It's not like, it's not like they said, because, you know, I think, some people tie for some people like it is a sexual release like pyromania mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um it is like a sexual thing yeah but it it didn't fix his well yeah it's, it's not, not his, his thing. thing right yeah. right yeah yeah so it's not like they were now having sex right right um but 
they, if anything, it's even worse for him. He's like, I am now nervous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't go home after this and have no. like passionate like sex from having right. done something like crazy together. Right. So the couple still weren't having sex. Um, but I think the fires were like a substitute for sex. Right. Like it's yeah. something they could do instead, like together instead of yeah. having sex. Um, and something that would bring them together. So for Charlie, it was all about Tanya. To him, she was this smart, beautiful woman, and he didn't understand why doing this made her happy. But if it made her happy, then he and would keep her with him, then she he would do what it took, right? Mm-hmm. No. He said in the beginning, Tanya would light the fires herself and he would drive the van. But at one point, she almost got caught and he couldn't stand the thought of her getting into trouble. So he started lighting them instead and she started driving. Um of the 86 fires that were lit, Tanya set the first dozen or so and Charlie set the others. When asked if these fires, uh, when asked if there were fires that Charlie liked more than others, he replied, I hated every night. Oh, Aww. so he didn't want to be doing it. Like, that's, you know, Aww, what he said. Charlie. So they both were held at the Accomac jail and it was described as like this really tiny jail where the janitor's closet doubled as like the visitor room. Like that's how small this jail is, right? Yeah. But they were held in separate areas, you know, the men's area and the women's area, but they would communicate by leaving each other notes in chapstick tubes in the jail yard, like Mm -hmm. when they were taken out during the day. And in one note, Charlie wrote, I'm really scared that if I get too much time, I'll lose you. I don't think you really know how much I love you. Oh. Eventually, Tanya was released on bail and the two would write each other frequently. In the letters, Tanya expressed that she still wanted to marry Charlie, even if he went to prison for a long time. In the letters, though, uh, she doesn't explicitly say it. She kind of indicates that she wants him to take the blame for like she's just like tell yeah. him you were like she doesn't say it but it's kind of like Ugh. indicated that like she sounds awesome right she, oh, yeah I hate her yeah I mean so much um there are also like I guess some of the things she said also kind of indicated that she thought if they were married then they wouldn't be able to testify against each other right, right? yeah so Charlie for his part refused to testify against Tanya in the upcoming trial that is. Until the sheriff visited Charlie in jail and told him that Tanya was seeing someone else <gasps> oh, oh, no. on the outside. And so Charlie was like, no, not my Tanya, not my toot. I don't believe it. <laughs> You're like, Let me log into our Facebook. Yeah, let me oh, see. My God. But then the sheriff produced graphic letters that Tanya had written to another man while she was in jail. Like oh, she, when she no. was in jail, she was writing letters to this other guy on the outside, like graphic oh, sexual no. letters. So at this point, you know, Charlie's heartbroken. Aww. He like truly heartbroken. He's devastated. And he reluctantly agrees to testify against Tanya. So Tanya was arrested again that December and she was charged with 61 additional counts of arson. Damn. Yeah. Because of the fact that every person in Accomack County had been affected by these fires. They couldn't hold the trial there. Right. The trials had to take place in Norfolk, Virginia. So Tanya's lawyer asked that each count have a separate trial, which I've never fucking heard. Holy shit. Like, 51? So, so it'd be 62 61. separate oh, yeah. trials. No. Right. I guess it was granted. So they, they get in, they get, they're starting these trials, right? Um, and on the first count of arson. And when Charlie, who was just totally defeated and broken and sad, testified uh, against her. So he testifies against her. And then Tanya testified in her own defense. And she continued to claim that she had nothing to do with the, the fires. And it was all Charlie the whole time. Yeah. I hate her. So after they both testified, it became clear that things didn't look good for Tanya. Like her defense team was like, Charlie came across as, quote, believable and kind of dumb. <laughs> and the prosecution had done a good job of painting Tanya as the ringleader entirely capable of manipulating someone like Charlie, right? Right. So it didn't look good. So they recommended that she take an Alford plea, meaning that she acknowledged that there was enough evidence to convict her without having to plead guilty of the crime. Right. In the second trial, so number two of 62, the defense put a new character witness on the stand for Tanya who said that she was, quote, brutally honest and it would not be in her nature to set fires or to lie about it. But it turns out this was Tanya's new boyfriend. Oh, well. Oh, God. So she did not put in an Alfred plea for this trial and the jury found her guilty. 
With 60 trials ahead of her, she decided to enter Alfred pleas for all remaining counts. <laughs> She's like, for the next 60 counts, I'll just I'll put in an Alfred plea because I don't want to go through this and yeah. be found guilty. Right. Who's got the time? Somebody's got to be a tiny taste of two. Right. Right. <laughs> Running that shit. Right. Um, so she was sentenced to 17 years total. And two days later, Charlie, who had owned up to everything the entire time, was sentenced to 15 years. So she actually got more time than he did. Yeah, barely. Yeah. Um, Charlie is finally no longer in love with Tanya Aww. after years of waiting for her to come back to him. Aww. She didn't. And so he's finally moved on. Years later, uh, the residents of Accomack County would talk amongst themselves about the fires and say that they had been lit for sex. But Monica Hesse, who wrote a book on the case called American Fire, Love, Arson, and Life in a, in a Vanishing Land, corrects this story. And she says, quote, the fires were not lit for sex, but for love. Oh, okay. I mean, it's, it's true, even though I, it's fucked. I really yeah. want like, know like what Tanya's motivations are, though. Yeah, it's, it's weird. A very it's manipulation. Very it's control. Um, you will do this because I asked you to do it. That's probably yeah. It's a manipulation tool, and she feels like she's pr- she probably gets something out of like him doing it because she doing asked something him. illegal. Yeah, yeah, because she asked him to. You're probably spot on with yeah. that. Yeah, that sounds the, like the most plausible explanation yeah there was someone i don't know if it was a site in, in the new york post article i read i don't know if it was a psychiatrist or if it was like a local sheriff or somebody was speculating about it and they were they were saying that they felt like maybe she felt like her life was totally out of control because yeah. tiny taste of two wasn't doing very well well no, i know shot. and i don't believe that here's what, else I, <laughs> here's what else i can't believe i can't believe phoebe judge said tiny taste of two she did. And her Phoebe judge I know, voice. and somehow and I classed kind of feel like it I'm up. She Am I listening to that immediately just on the way that. home? Just yes. to hear that. Mm-hmm. Just Absolutely. to hear ti- Phoebe I believe, judge say tiny taste of two. <laughs> I believe the episode is called On Fire, so yeah, yeah. it shouldn't be hard to find. But but yeah, I mean, I, they they said maybe it was like she was feeling really out of control. It was a control thing. It yeah. was just yeah. like she felt like she could have control in this one way mm-hmm. because the rest of her life, I mean, she's engaged to a man she's not having sex with her store is failing i think her kid was having some kind of like problem at school and this was something that she could do that she felt like she had control over and like wow and maybe also what you said like she had control over charlie too wow Wow. so wow that was a wild (laughs) ride yeah and i loved it i heard it on criminal and i was like oh i'm writing this one down (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah, I love that podcast too. I Ooh. really do. They find it's it's such a intelligent way to find these really interesting stories about criminality just yeah. in general and it's it's fascinating. They have one on the guy who did all the spirit photographs. That's oh. interesting. Yeah, like where, where they were like, "How did he do it?" and like, you yeah. know, got away with you know, selling all these spirit photographs. It's a great podcast if you haven't listened to it. Yeah. 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 Well, what are you guys watching this week? I'm not watching anything else. I I haven't watched anything else. I haven't <laughs> either. My week was just insane. Like, I was so busy this week, and I just started back to school, and it's just, I've been in it. Well. Oh, okay. I, I am a nerd. I am a huge nerd. Uh, but my not a BattleBots nerd. No, no. Okay, ish. It's growing. <laughs> it's growing on me. But I have been waiting what feels like my whole life for this to happen, okay. and that is for the Netflix adaptation of The Sandman. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Which is coming out later this year. You guys, I got, I got the first volume of the comics, Preludes and Nocturnes, when I was thirteen. My dad got it for me. And I just I I've loved that series for most of my life. I reread it every year. I'm obsessed with it. So I've I've been I follow it. I have alerts set so I can learn like yeah. all the news, everything, everything, everything. Well, what I hadn't done to this point was listen to the Audible. 
Oh, oh nice. And so finally, like, I know your husband, Chris, uh-huh. re- he was like, hey, are you doing that? And I'm like, no, like, just audiobooks for whatever reason have yeah. never really latched in. I really am a visual reader. Yeah, and that is a very visual, it's a graphic. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'm like, how would that translate? Well, I, I, I went, I went on Audible, I got it, and I've been listening to it all week while I've been working, you know, doing copy paste. So I have the um, advantage of doing something that I don't need to pay that much attention to at sure, work, sure, sure. and I can pay attention to this. I cannot recommend it enough. Really? It is outstanding. It's like all these different voices. <gasps> um, James McAvoy plays uh, Morpheus. Nice. Oh. Riz Ahmed is the Corinthian. Uh, what? It, it's so, so well done. It's so great. And it's like 16 hours and it's just like the first few books. Yeah. So there's like two more um, installments that will be coming out on Audible. Of course, it's like it's the number one most downloaded audio book right of all now, times. Yeah. And like, yeah, people are stoked about the Netflix thing. And I I wanted to reread the books ahead of time. And then I was like, wait, I'll just check out this, yeah. this Audible thing. And I can't recommend it enough. So okay. if you're searching for something, I was hesitant to how a graphic novel would translate yeah. into it. But it gave really cool insight into the way that a graphic novel is created because Neil Gaiman had to write out the story, yeah. give it to the artist who would then draw. So a lot of what they're reading are the the author's notes of yeah. how to oh, illustrate the, the panel. They're like, Morpheus walks into a room that's blah, blah, blah. It it reads, it's like a book. Wow. Oh, that's oh. cool. Really cool. Oh, I would love to listen to that. That actually, actually sounds rad. Yeah, it sounds yeah. dope. So if, uh, and I, I'm so excited for the Netflix thing because it is going to be different a little bit from the graphic novels because they're updating it. Instead of it taking place in 1989, it takes place in 2021. It's not going to be like a faithful adaptation the same way that the audiobook is literally just the actual just book yeah the actual book so have both have room in your life yeah. for both why not both why not, why both? not both and so i'm living my best nerd life love it amazing. so yeah yeah well hey if you guys have something that we should read or listen to or watch if you have stories if you just want to reach out and say hello go to our one-stop shop of website it's my com. also do not forget to like and rate and review yeah. and we love you so much cheers you know it's funny of all the things i've been missing over the past year it's the little things i miss the most like making awkward eye contact across the room or meeting strangers in line that's what i'm trying to get back to vaccination is the most effective way to help prevent covid-19 and get back to the good times Find out where you can get your COVID-19 vaccine near you at vaccines.gov. That's V-A-C-C-I-N-E-S dot gov.